Yeah. Handwritten note. Sure. Or physically. Oh, hi. Energy, energy, energy. That creates the lid in, in, in everybody. So if you and I disagree on something, then you must be erased and banished from the board. like 500 like a man. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Sam Speaks and Sam Speaks Radio Podcast on iTunes. Today I welcome Peter Lorimer from PLG Estates. He has energy and excitement like no other person I have met. It's been fantastic and we are just starting now. So hello and Hi. welcome to the show. Hi, energy, energy, energy. <laughs> um, yeah, people keep saying that. Yeah, you kind of, you know, everyone I feel is kind of here and you're over here. Oh God. It is awesome. Is that good? It's amazing. It's a huge plus. I should turn that off probably, right? Probably, probably. So let's get right to it. You have a great personal brand. I went on your website and I know you're very progressive, which I love. It's, mm -hmm. you know, being different is what makes all the difference. But how do you use your personal brand to really grow your real estate business? So PLG Estates is, is, the bro is a brokerage that my wife and I own. We have about 100 agents. We, are, we have two offices, one in Beverly Hills and one in uh, it's the east side of LA. It's not East LA. It's like the east between downtown and Beverly Hills. So I make it sound all cool and hip when really it's still kind of, kind of pretty safe. <laughs> um, and our brand was really born out of, I mean, I don't know how much history you want, but I'll just give you a brief history. I used to be a record producer back in the day, right? Mm. That's what brought me to the States. That's why I still have this horrendously thick British accent. Um, and I came here to do all the ooch, ooch, ooch house music back in the 90s, the, uh, which is now called EDM, I believe, from the youngsters. <laughs> and um, that was a very streetwise industry. The music business is very streetwise. And being a DJ as well, every week I had to go through the vinyl. This is me going through the vinyl, not typing. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and pick out tunes that I thought would work for the dance floor. Mm -hmm. So that mentality of what's next, what's next, what's next has been seared into my brain. And so when real, when I got into real estate, I, I left the music business. I knew it, I didn't know. I thought it was gonna collapse. I was lucky enough to have a lot of hits. I had over 30 number ones in the Billboard Club charts. And then I saw a little uh, blog post that CDs could be ripped. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what's that? And they said, oh, that's you can suck songs off of CDs. I'm like, that's it, done. So I'd built a, a, a great clientele for doing records in LA and I flipped it into real estate and mm -hmm. to my shock and amazement, all of the people that I worked with, I went to them and said, hey, you know, uh, I used to do records for you. Uh, you wanna buy a house, sell a house? And they're like, yeah, great Pete. <laughs> we loved you in the record business, so sure, let's do it. And. I grew, that was the birth of the brand before the birth of PLG. Mm -hmm. And my initial, you know, we all have, I don't know if I should, well, I guess I'm just gonna say it. Just say it. We all, we all have voices, don't we? We yeah. all have, don't we? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I have a voice. Okay, I have many. <laughs> voices in my head or just my actual voice? No, many in my head. <laughs> I do. I thought we all did. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, in all seriousness, apparently it's, it's a trait of creatives that we have a lot of, we have a lot of voices and many of those are self-doubt. Mm -hmm. And so when I joined my first corporate real estate company, I'm like, okay, I've got to stop wearing jeans, I've got to wear suits and shoes, which there is nothing wrong with. Mm -hmm. And I tried to fit in. Mm -hmm. And then I hated it. And after a couple of years, it was almost like, you know, coming out of the closet where I just said, to my wife, I'm like, you know what, I'm done. I can't wear these awful clothes. I've got to wear my jeans and my t-shirts and I've got to be me and I just don't give a shit if it fails. Mm -hmm. And the moment I did that, everything took off massively. Right. And that's just what I'm comfortable in. You look fabulous in expensive clothes. Um, and but we have a very similar background. I don't think you know. Oh. I used to manage nightclubs prior to real estates. 
and I actually also created a college course teaching nightclub management. Wow. So I understand that nightlife background and how you have to think fast. And you're from and Miami, right? I am from Miami. So you've seen what I've seen. Oh, I've seen it all, <laughs> and I have the voices as well. But I think it's interesting because a lot of people don't understand or they think, oh, well, nightclubs, what does that have to do with real estate? But it's really cool, in my opinion, because you do have to think fast. It's such a mm -hmm. crazy lifespan of you know two years or less. So you have to be creative. You have to be creative with your marketing and you have to be able to give service to that client and make sure that they're happy. And so when I got clients just like you, it's like I'm reaching out to all of those people that you know I was in essentially the hospitality industry because that's the industry it was and then saying, hey, I'm in real estate now and I'm marketed better than anyone else and I grew my personal brand. So what stuck out about you when I was researching you is that you have such a cool personal brand and your true personality comes out. It's not this, hello, I'm mm -hmm. Peter, welcome to PLG Estates. And I'm not going to say it's not proper, but it's you. <laughs> it is you. My and mother I would kill you. No. I <laughs> love it. So you're very authentic and I think it's cool because everything that Sam speaks is about is about you know how there's different people everyone goes about it in in a different way in a different manner there's no right there's no wrong it's just about being you because you want to work with people that want to work with you right so tell us about this personal brand if you go on PLG estates you will see Peter in these really cool videos and how did you come up with that concept and what makes yeah. them so unique it's it's so interesting that we're, we're doing this interview here it's almost surreal I had a massive aha moment downstairs last year. I hadn't done one video. Mm -hmm. And Chris Smith, who I know you know, mm -hmm. uh, was doing a panel on video and he, he said something where he goes, don't make the video about you being an open house all schmaltzy and this, that and the other. Make the video about the industry and just give away content. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And a spark went off. And the videos now, I mean, today, when I do videos, I'll do 20 in a row, boom, all mm -hmm. one take, no edits. When I started, they were horrendous. They were like, um, hi, this is Peter from PLG, and <laughs> we're gonna be talking about sewer inspections right after this. And it was just <laughs> ghastly. You know, but like Ben McCall says, it's a muscle. It's a muscle that you have to practice sure. and not be afraid to fail and not be afraid to, as I said yesterday, look like a dickhead if it goes wrong. Yeah. You know, you've put yourself out there. Of course. I've been called all kinds of things. Being on television, I've been called ugly and stupid and everything else. But fortunately, the positive outweighs the negative and mm -hmm. you just kind of turn it off and just focus and go for it. That's it. I think... I think you and I are very similar, but very different. Mm -hmm. I am a girl. I knew there was something. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> you know, you have this laser beam kind of focus, which I admire greatly. I also have major ADD. Oh, you do? I do. It's bad. Really? Yeah. And I'm, I'm all about, I think that the best people in life are kind of all all over the place. I think maybe I got ADD, I don't know. Balloons! I mean, I'm very like, <laughs> oh, pretty, yeah, great. Uh, but I think there are similarities that kind of tie us all together, and uh, authenticity, and, and kind of balls to the wall. I mean, in a way, you're very eloquent and lovely, but you're still balls to the wall. Oh, yeah. I'm just rough around the edges. Yeah. Not, not really, maybe a little bit, you know. <laughs> and so the brand, what I, what I made a, a, a distinct uh, decision to do with the brand was I don't want to fit in. Mm -hmm. I never fit, fitted in anywhere. So I didn't want the brand to fit in. So I created this brand to attract, you know, other wild horses, misfits, people that felt uncomfortable in the industry, almost like a, a pirate ship mm -hmm. where I would find these other agents that were like, oh my God, thank God that you're just not corporate and this is a creative environment. And I remember our first office was about as big as this hotel room. And I signed the lease and we took a photo of me and Cindy. And I said to Cindy, this is gonna sink or swim and I'm fine with both. Mm -hmm. As long as we, we flourish or fail on our own merits. Mm -hmm. 
and we you know put our balls on the line and then we went from 400 feet to 2,000 feet to 7,000 feet in Beverly Hills and 3,000 feet in another office now and I really feel that the attraction is coming I'm not trying to get I'm not doing adult daycare mm-hmm. I'm not trying to get licenses with bodies I'm very selective about cool people who completely blur the line between client and agent. So you look at us, no, you can't tell who's who. So when you say cool, what's a cool agent to you? Someone that looks like they just got off a tour bus. That's my brand. Mm-hmm. Someone that's kind of in jeans, scruffy, you know, um, someone who a Google engineer can relate to. I call them the skateboarding millionaires. Mm-hmm. Someone that may look like they just smoke pot, <laughs> but they know their areas inside and out, and sure. they talk to they they talk to the clients like they talk to their mates. Right. Now, this isn't a brand that will work for everyone. Of course, and not in every market. Not in every market, but it would work in Miami. It would mm-hmm. work in New York. It works in LA because LA is so much entertainment. Right. And we go hard after not just celebrities and musicians, but Guys that work in recording studios, grips, guys that drive trucks for the movies. They're all associated with this creative sphere and we go, hey, we're your people. Mm. And our offices look like Soho House or a beautiful swanky hotel. Like It looks like a Chelsea hotel, Chelsea, London. Awesome. Maybe I should just check in there. Yeah, more welcome. There you go. Come over. <laughs> What's your listing presentation like? Obviously, you're focused on a very cool client as well as a cool agent so you're very progressive you're very laid back but at the same time you do have your serious aspects to it you couldn't have a very successful company Correct. unless there were some serious components yeah. so what is your listing presentation like interesting we just did a whole thing at this at the office last week my listing presentation i don't know if it's different to everyone else's no paper no comps no nothing. Walk in, eye contact, eye contact, eye contact, eye contact. Very much like a bold in here. Mm-hmm. Hey, all right, Sam, what's going on? So people are like, whoa, this guy's like so <laughs> full of energy and wow, he's so confident. Yeah. And, and we never show them charts, we never show them diagrams, we never show them what's sold in the neighborhood, nothing. It's just intense conversation. Knowing the numbers, you gotta know the comps. Of course. You know, you gotta know them. But for me, cracking open a folder kills a listing presentation. Mm-hmm. Just kills it. And I don't even. Why do you think that? Well, because the momentum goes. I need this. Mm-hmm. When I got this, I can read your entire body language, I know which way it's going. Mm-hmm. It's the streetwise kind of yeah. kidding me. As soon as I'm like, we're both looking at sheets of paper, I'm not seeing what's going on. Mm-hmm. And to me, there isn't anything on the sheets of paper that I can't demonstrate through words. Right. And so the agents at PLG, of course, we do have listening presentations they can take, but I'm like, don't use it. Right. The only time you bring anything, the only analog piece of paper I ever use is a listing presentation, is a listing agreement, and I'll bang it on the table and I'll lean in and I'll be like, yeah, all right, seven million, great. Sign here, sign here, sign here, initial here, sign here, great, we're done. So, so, it's, so then I, it's easy for me to say that your big thing with the listing presentation is confidence. It doesn't matter what the correct. comps are, it doesn't matter what anything is, if you're not confident, yeah. you're not getting the listing. But you gotta know the data. Of course. You gotta you know the data. You have to back it up. In case, what I say to people is, hey, I'm not gonna break out the comps, you already know what's sold. Right. You know it, I know it, and if you don't know it, I do know it, so we're good. Right. Let's take, for example, what's your biggest listing right now? And how, what's your process, marketing and advertising? What does make you unique as far as that process of marketing and advertising? So I think the, the one thing that separates PLG from all the other firms in LA is the fact that I am an, unashamed technology addict and social media junkie. Mm -hmm. So all of these sophisticated granular methods to market properties, and it's not just properties, it's the lifestyle around the property. Mm -hmm. You do lifestyle great, Mm -hmm. 
I do my lifestyle to my grungy rock and roll people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to use the tools of social media that I just get phenomenally better at all the time instead of slick brochures. If I'm doing slick brochures, they might as well just use, you know, Sotheby's. Yeah. Are you with Sotheby's? I have my own company. You have your own company now. Come on now. Sorry. <laughs> I knew that, just testing. <laughs> um, but there are, every other company provides these generic, beautiful, shiny brochures. Yeah. And I'm like, that doesn't sell houses. You know it and I know it. What sells houses is exposure. Mm -hmm. And there is no better exposure than social media. And I challenge anybody who's listening to the podcast, take time out of your day of prospecting. Take time out of your day that you're just kind of wasting on other, on other facets of your business and learn social media inside and out. We're at the beginning of the wedge. Mm -hmm. How are you learning? Wider. How are you learning about social mm -hmm. media? As simple as Facebook, Facebook and all of the current ones, Instagram, they're always coming up with something new. But how are you learning about the new technology as well? Well, Inman is phenomenal for that. Mm -hmm. I, I read their website every day. Mm -hmm. But it sounds stupid. I said this in the talk yesterday. Everything anyone needs to know about anything is on YouTube. Right. You need to know how to change a fuse in a refrigerator, it's on YouTube. You need to know the latest tips and tricks for the new version of Instagram that came out yesterday, it's on YouTube. Right. So I just stay ahead of the curve and the moment something comes out, I will adopt it and test it and decide whether or not I want to use it. Right. And what that does is it buys me a few months ahead of the vanilla pack. And then the vanilla pack finally catch up a few months later and then I hop onto something else. Right, exactly. And that just keeps us uh, with the reputation of being these hip, cool kids. Well, not kids, but with, we're the super hip, progressive company. And people watch us when we implement things. I see other firms trying to do it. Of course. Which is you're doing, Yeah, of course. If you're doing something successful, everyone wants to kind of ride on that coattail, ride on that train. Mm -hmm. How would you say, you know, people are always saying, okay, well, I'll do something on Facebook, I'll boost it. But realistically, what is that return? How many buyers have you found on or through social media and what platforms? Great question. Great question. And this is my favorite question because there is no formula. There will be in about 10 years because there'll be enough data that people can crunch it and go, oh, well, you know, if you'd actually reached out to 25 people a day on Facebook, you would have got. Mm -hmm. Right now, the, the, the metrics on social media is like catching a greased pig. Right. The moment you get your arms around it, it changes. And so for me, the uh, quantifying the ROI on social media, you may as well try and predict who's gonna win the Super Bowl. Sure. Can't do it. And I love that because it means, guess what? The majors will never be able to run as fast as me. Mm -hmm. At least not now. Let's talk about Magic Minute. Okay. I, love the, I love watching that show. So how did you come up with that? I mean, that is a little bit more on the serious side. You're talking about trends and, and the markets. So when did you start to do that? And again, has that brought you business from just focusing on the personal brand? That's more I didn't answer your previous question, so let me answer that. How much business has come from social media? Sure. I will say this. It's hard, I can't quantify it. But I would say 75% of my deals are all very aware of what we're doing on social. Mm -hmm. Are they saying, we hired you because of your social? I don't know if they would say that. I mean, I suppose if I asked them directly, they may. Right. But then buyers, I know for a fact, they're all coming out of the woodwork because we're constantly in their face. Mm -hmm. um, and then the magic minute, again, I have to give props to Chris Smith, who had the light bulb go off in my mind, which was talk about your industry and give away facts. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, where's the white space? I've got to find the white space because there's all these syrupy, you know, come and look at my $10 million oceanfront oasis. There's millions of them, right? But there's nobody talking about boring subjects like what is escrow? Right. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm doing this for two reasons. I'm doing this to give away content, give away information, and to hopefully attract agents who I like to the mm -hmm. firm. And so I started doing all of these 
horrendously titled videos like what to expect during escrow and what are <laughs> contingencies. You know, they just, they're just so dull. In exactly that voice? In exactly that voice. <laughs> but I did them with enthusiasm and the first 10 or 20 I did, my little voice, which is the nice voice, was like saying, just keep going, just keep doing it, <laughs> just keep moving forward. I guess that's my Mrs. Doubtfire voice. <laughs> and then the other voices were, no, nah, nobody's watching, it's a failure, this is a flop, you need to cancel out of this. <laughs> and, I, and so I, my gut, which has been my guide, for better or for worse, my entire life, said, this is the right path. And we kept going, and then I did one about escrow, thousand hits. Did one about contingencies, 2,000 hits. Did one about, will I lose my deposit, my earnest money deposit if I cancel out of a deal? Thousands of hits. And then now it's organically grown into this uh, kind of monster. And I did my very first pathetic video in my hotel room at Inman last year. And a year later, I'm speaking on it. I'm doing podcasts, I'm doing you. You're, yeah. you're on another pathetic video? <laughs> is that what you're telling me? Is that what I'm gathering now? No! This is wonderful. <laughs> Which voice is that? That's the itty bitty shitty committee. Like, no, get out. I like out. that. The itty bitty <laughs> shitty committee. Oh, that's great. That's another line that you will use. I will. I'll do a YouTube on it. Peter, last question. Yes. You're doing all these videos and a lot of agents think that they do a video and that's all they need to do and suddenly they're going to get that following and then they kind of get discouraged because it's like, okay, I have five views and I spent all this time doing a video. You know that it can't just be as simple as taking the video and posting it on YouTube and then walking away. What is your process after you take that first video? So the process is um, digesting as much information from YouTube about how to post on social, social media, which there are such vastly varying opinions on. Mm -hmm. And I learned the hard way. I used to post on YouTube and then put a link in Facebook and then I realized that that doesn't work even though it boosts your YouTube uh, views. And the, the, the main thing, not just about social media and videos, but about anything in life, if you're a butcher, a baker, or a candlestick maker, it's consistency, mm -hmm. right? It may, maybe it's door knocking, not that I could, I, I was awful at that, I used to scare people. I feel like you would be a fun door knocker. Oh, I was awful. I'd be like, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> hello, hello, <laughs> what do you want, what do you want? So I'd pack that in. Um, but whatever your facet is in this industry or other industries, stay at it. Right. You know, stay right. at it. And for me, social media and video is something I love, so I enjoy doing it. I'm, I'm going to keep doing it for years and years and years. Awesome. Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. Make sure to check out Peter and continue to check in and watch Sam Speaks and Sam Speaks Radio on iTunes. Thanks again.